this material is worldwide, and even even Capella is using it as well. Because I did an interview at Capella uh, just a, oh, okay. two, two days ago. Okay, okay. I didn't. Know, I thought this was a Hyatt sponsored event. Uh, no, it is. It is a sponsored uh, okay. program. Uh, they are the they are the uh, presenting sponsor. Okay. Um, but I control the content. Okay, got it. So got it. it. Okay, so the book title is Uplifting Service. Yeah, okay, okay yes. Got it. So, no, okay. Uplifting Service. So, okay, let's try it. Oh, okay. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. Say the height, and uh, I have a special guest today this morning, and that's Mr. Ron Kaufman himself. Uh, he has released his new book called Uplifting Service, and it's one of the best sellers today uh, listed on the New York Times. Now, don't forget, Mr. Ron Kaufman is also an evangelist uh, on customer service globally and uh, he's going to share with us about his new release and also tell us about the new trends about customer service and how important it is. Um, good morning, Mr. Ron Kaufman. Good morning. It's and, a pleasure to be with you. Yes, and uh, it's been a real pleasure to have you. I know that you're a busy man and uh, most of my viewers right now are wondering uh, what's your new book all about? Great. Well, the new book is called Uplifting Service, and the subtitle is The Proven Path to Delighting Your Customers, Colleagues, and Everyone Else You Meet. And what I've done in this book that's different from so many other books that are in the market about service is I've looked at what are the successful organizations who create outstanding service experiences year after year. They have the reputation of outstanding service. They have the profitability that goes with outstanding service. Not people like Singapore Airlines but also Apple Computer or Amazon.com, various hotel chains. How do they build a culture inside the organization that allows for that high level of service performance externally and internally? Mm -hmm. And that's what I've documented in the book. Oh, wow. Now, about, about the, uh, the success stories yes. of, of customer service, you know, how important customer service is today uh, even for, you know, for, for the world, yes, uh, especially Singapore and, and, and the emerging markets. Right. Uh, could you give us some insight? On sure, that? It, it's vital, and I think Singapore as a nation has understood that for several decades. Because from a manufacturing standpoint, product is commoditizing. With globalization, you've got price points dropping consistently. Supply chains are getting tighter and tighter. So how can an organization consistently compete? How can you get an advantage that's actually sustainable? You don't want to be just the lowest price because somebody can undercut your price. It can't only be that you've got the best product because the product cycles are getting shorter and shorter. But if you create an outstanding customer experience, if you have your service as your differentiator from others within your industry, and you can create a culture that delivers on that over and over again, that can become a sustainable advantage. Not only bringing customers back, but also naturally attracting the best employees mm -hmm. and having them want to stay there. So then employee turnover drops, employee engagement goes up, and that's also a winning strategy for the future. And about winning strategies, though, um, how do you, uh, you know, balance between uh, compensation yes. and customer service? You know, many employees will say, look, if you want me to deliver a good service, you've got to pay me more. Pay me more, more right. You know? uh, and, and for the employer, it says, oh gosh, you know, I've got to pay more for a better customer service. Now, what is your take on this? Right, that's actually a horrible approach. And if you're a leader listening to this, don't go down that road. And if you're an employee, let me explain why. We had a client that we were working with in the Asian region, in the automotive industry. And what they started to do was to pay people for higher customer satisfaction scores. So if you delivered a higher customer satisfactory experience, you would get a bonus. Well, all of that worked well, and the scores went up, and the bonuses were paid out. But then there was the flood in Thailand, and that hit the supply chain. And then there was a tsunami in Japan, and that hit the supply chain. And so all of a sudden, there weren't enough cars. And you know what happened? Because they didn't have the budget to keep paying out bonus, mm -hmm. customer satisfaction scores dropped. If what you're focusing on is creating a culture that delivers an outstanding service experience, what we've discovered is that recognizing people, giving them that pat on the back, giving them the appreciation is what motivates and creates more desire to continue to serve other people better. You don't want to link service performance just to pay. You want to do a hygiene level of pay and maybe a little more when your company is more successful. But to really incent people to go the extra mile, give them the extra appreciation. Amazing. And now, uh, folks, uh, there's one more question. Of course, there are a few more, but uh, people ask, you know, 
customer service is, is the most important factor these days, you know, because there's a lot of uh, a fear of retrenchments and because there is a economic zones where pe the people are facing a lot of inflation, so there's a lot of cutbacks going on. Yes. Now, however, uh, speaking about customer service, there's also got customer service has a attribute towards character and emotional management. And many, and many of the employers are asking, how do we manage people who have anger problems? You know, and, you know is, there, is, there, is, there, is there such a thing as anger management for customers? Right, right. Or difficult customers, or what about your difficult colleague? You know, how do I handle that? Yes. First, let me say that any employee who takes on the uplifting service challenge, you know, how do I deliver a better experience for my boss, for my colleagues, for my customers, for my clients? That's actually, in today's economic climate, a good thing to do for career success, mm -hmm. for job security, is not to say, what should the company be doing for me, but rather to be focusing on creating value for other people, and that's my definition of service. Mm -hmm. Now, to look at this difficult situation question that you're asking, the truth is there are no difficult customers. There are customers with difficult situations. Really? Oh. Yeah, there are no difficult colleagues. There are colleagues who are having a difficult moment, right? The question for us then becomes, how can we engage with that other person in a way that actually creates value for them, that allows them to move forward in a constructive manner? Mm -hmm. And that could be, as you say, having the emotional fortitude or resilience or maturity to be able to listen to the upset, but not respond in an upset manner. Instead, to respond compassionately or to respond empathetically for two reasons. Number one is you can never really be sure what's going on with that other person. It may be something at home. It could be something with their health. It could be something to do with their finances. It could have nothing to do with you. And so responding like it's about their anger in the moment is really not always appropriate. Let's get behind that and show compassion and care for the other human being. And here's the other reason. There will be times when that angry person is you. And you will want your colleagues or the other service providers in your world to treat you with that kind of concern and compassion. So when facing those situations, I say it's really an opportunity to you know, dig deep inside and take action to create value for them, not to criticize them, not to complain about them, not to make their life more difficult. Well, and is it true that all of us are customers to each other? Yes. You know, even, yes. Even within the organizations that we work for the employer, actually our, our employer is our customer and we are also a customer to our own colleagues. I change the words just slightly. I say that inside the organization, yes. we are service partners. Oh, okay. I serve you, you serve me, and we're in a partnership of service together to create a great experience for the real customer. Who's the real customer? The one who has a choice about where to bring their money, where to bring their business, what to do with your reputation in the oh. market. Is that how Starbucks uh, you know, work out their, their philosophy? Well, in Starbucks, which is a great example of a very strong service culture, let's look at the baristas, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know that when they're hiring new people, one of the first people they want to interview, the new candidate, mm -hmm. is the people they recently hired? Because those are the ones that are going to work together, right? Yeah. So let's say you come in for an interview, and I've only been working at Starbucks for a few months, but I get to interview you and give feedback to my supervisor about whether or not I think we should hire you. If we then do hire you, now I have a vested stake in your success. Mm -hmm. I'll actually go the extra mile to help you be successful because now you and I are service partners and we're going to work together to give the real customer a great service experience. Amazing. Now, before we let you go, I know, this, you, know you, you have a, a time presence and that is what advice would you give for, for those people out there wanting to discover customer service yes you know and, and how can they begin giving good customer service yes uh, because they ask themselves and many even wrote to me say that wait you know uh, Robin or uh, and mr. Ron I had no idea how to begin good customer service could you tell me at least you know give, give me a place to start yeah a start yeah. probably the first three steps and some of them are saying give me a place to start and I work in the warehouse or give me a place to start in supervising this team. Or give me a place to start because I'm the senior manager and I got here because I'm financially smart, but I don't really know anything about service. So the answer to that is find an action step that allows you to 
Create more value for someone else. So if you're the boss, you want to create value for your employees. If you're a supervisor, you want to create value for your team or your shift. If you're a frontline service provider facing the external customer, of course you want to take customer service action to create value for them. Anybody who's doing anything in any work position could focus in one of two ways. Either, what am I doing and am I doing it right? Follow the checklist, follow the procedure, or change the focus. Why am I doing what am I doing? Who is this really for? Who is getting value from me following the checklist or the procedure and put my attention there? That's the first major step. And then figure out how do I step up to create more value for the other person. That's why the book is called Uplifting Service. Amazing. And Mr. Ron, before we really let you go, may I ask, I wanted to know this big secret from you, and that is what caused you to start uh, this campaign of uh, customer question. service evangelism? You know, right. What's your philosophy? Was it because you had bad service before uh, somewhere in Asia? Or I'm sorry, <laughs> no, no. Uh, Singapore is a great place. Singapore is a fabulous <laughs> place. <laughs> I've been it. here more than two decades because I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but but really, what's the secret? And, yes. and the secret of your success. What motivates me? What turns me on? Right? Where did That's it come right. from? The, I'm very fortunate. My father's mother taught kindergarten for 40 years in New York City. And I had the privilege as a very young boy of going to her kindergarten and experiencing this amazing woman who every day got up and her focus was, how do I engage with the other people around me, whether they're little or their parents or their neighbors or me as the grandchild, in a way that would make them feel better, in a way that would light them up, in the way that would take care of them. And so I really observed that not only did she do that, but her own life was absolutely full of joy. So the more she gave, the more she got. What went around really did come around. And I realized that her orientation was towards uplifting the quality of life for other people. And that's been that really core foundation for me. Well, amazing. Yeah. And Mr. Ron Kaufman, thank you for joining us in this show. Pleasure. Uh, and thank you for watching this, the uh, National Greatest Choice Say Hi, I'm Robin Steinberg. Have a great week ahead and have a great customer service for your friends and your family. And don't forget, please, uh, get this copy, Uplifting Service, The Proven Path by Ron Kaufman. And I fully endorse this book. I love this book. By the way, your mm -hmm. viewers can go to upliftingservice.com and get the whole first section of the book for free. That's right. There you go. And uh, once again, have a good week. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mr. Ron Kaufman. Good. Good, good, good. We yes. didn't bring this up. Did you want to? No, no, no. This one will be a picture. No, no, okay.